A plans to issue every Dominican with a multi-purpose identification card are said to be going well so far. Mass Dominic to kick off with a bang with the opening parade carded for this Saturday. And we give an update on government's recently launched national employment program. Thanks for joining us for another edition of National Focus. I'm Mervyn Matthew. And I'm Tasia Flosak. Stay with us for the details of the headline stories and others coming up right after this. Dominica is blessed with an abundance of water, but getting it to your home is an expensive venture. You have a responsibility to conserve water, to use it wisely. Remember the old adage, you never miss the water till the well runs dry. Think water, think life. Welcome back. Time now for the details of the news. Plans to issue every Dominican with a multi-purpose identification card are going well thus far. GIS News spoke with Chief Elections Officer Stephen LaRocque about the progress of the MPID card. The card is intended to provide a unique means of identification for OECS citizens and is one that is authentic and will conform to international standards. Dominica is one of the first islands in the OECS where the card will be issued. We are the first to start enrollment. Um, the other islands have not gone ahead because they had identification cards before. Dominica starting from scratch, we had no identification cards, so we were the first to start. Um, Grenada and St. Lucia um, will be starting soon. I just had a meeting this morning with OECS and Grenada is going to be starting. I think they have shipped their card to them and they're hoping to start um, within a month or two. Larock informed that enrollment started as scheduled on December 9, 2013 and to date 2,600 public officers have been enrolled. The process started with public officers and presently teachers are signing on. One of the main challenges faced by the electoral office in this process is location. Larock informed that currently only two officers are handling enrollments downstairs the civil registry. However, he assured that soon the electoral office will be relocated and more staff will be on hand to ease the process. Larock also informed that Dominica is only at enrollment stage and no actual cards have been issued as yet. We have not started issuing cards because this, the equipment to issue cards is housed at the new building. Until we have moved there, we will not be issuing cards. According to Larock, despite constraints, the progress is going well, and soon enough, enrollment for the general public will commence. Things have been going um, rather smoothly. Um, in some instances, they even have, and we're just dealing with the public service, and we, they have had to be um, staying beyond um, normal working hours to enroll people. Um, they have done, I think, as much as 150 in one day. So I find they're doing well for doing that, seeing that all the process entails. So they're really doing quite well. Um, as soon as we have moved to the new building, the commission has taken the decision that we'll be dealing with the public. But to avoid um, any kind of run on, we will do it in an organized manner. We will bring you more from this interview in Thursday's newscast. The term domestic violence almost readily brings to mind abuse directed towards women. However, Annie St. Louis Family Life Educator at Dominica Planned Parenthood wants the public to be aware that abuse can be inflicted on any gender at any age, hence the term gender-based violence. Even gender-based violence is frequently used interchangeably with violence against women as most acts of violence is inflicted by men on women and girls. GIS had the opportunity to have an exclusive with Mrs. St. Luce where she spoke about gender-based violence. 
society would think that violence against women is gender-based violence because we, we, we perceive that violence is only committed against women, but there are men who are in relationships where they are being violated. And so you have to consider that, that fact and say gender-based violence, meaning that it's abuse against the person because of gender roles, okay? So that is where you have the conflict. So violence against women would be specifically targeted to women. Gender-based violence covers both women and um, and men, boys and girls. Gender-based violence can take several forms. These include but are not limited to physical, emotional, financial and sexual abuse. St. Louis says sexual abuse is one of the most common forms of gender-based violence. This is like the, the, the mother of all as I sometimes is when I talk to young people. This is one of the, the top forms of gender-based violence where you're violating somebody because they are a weaker, weaker sex than you are and people use sexual um, abuse to, in, to inflict um, trauma, trauma on the victim. St. Louis revealed that these forms of abuse are usually learned behavior which is passed on from generation to generation. She says the best way to deal with these issues is through counsel and a change in behavior patterns. The society and the way we are socialized is one of the biggest um, corporates in terms of gender-based violence. Even from the time a child is small, they look at the way the father reacts to the mother, the way grandfather reacts to grandmother, the way um, uncles react to aunties and so on. And they learn gender norms, they learn things like there are certain things that women can't do, certain things that men can do, certain things that are only for men and only for women. And they learn, learn those things from the family, from society, from the church and so on. A lot of the things that we were taught growing up were misconceived as to what roles that we should play as from the different genders that we have and so people grow up and they learn these behaviors and then it's passed on from generation to generation in terms of gender-based violence i just want us as a society to be aware that our children mimic us they learn from us and um it would really be the honors would be really on us as adults to learn good behavior towards each other, that our children can practice good behavior as they get older. A man who becomes a batterer, or a woman who becomes a batterer, did not become that way overnight. It was learned behavior from when they were a child. And so that child learned all of those behaviors until they become an adult, and they begin exhibiting that type of attitude towards others. So most times we feel that they are bad people, but they are not. They are people who learn to bad behavior. And the, the onus is on us now as adults to take that responsibility to teach our young people how to relate to others, how to relate to the other sex, how to be respectful to the other sex. Um, understand that gender roles and gender norms are what we perceive them to be, but they may not be the reality. According to St. Luce, although the issue of gender-based violence is not prevalent in the Dominican society, it exists enough to be a cause for concern. Her organization is involved in bringing awareness to the issue through intervention programs. Although we do not have like programs, many programs specifically targeted towards gender-based violence, we've implemented a program called Partnership for Peace, a violence prevention program. And we did this in collaboration with UN Women, Cariman, and the Ministry of Education. That program was targeted at young men. And so the first part of this program was to train community workers, social workers, policemen, and in the use of a, a specific tool that helps to look at gender-based violence and the psychological effect on, on, on the community that you're working with. And we also did a pilot program with young men from the secondary schools around Rosu in the Rosu catchment area. The program is designed to get the participants to do a lot of introspection. What is going on with them? Why do they relate to the other sex in a particular way? Um, what did they learn about treating women and treating men from home, from their communities? What are the forms of violence that they're exposed to within their communities? And how can they make a difference. She added that Planned Parenthood is looking forward to implementing this second leg of the program, which will be done through the judiciary system. This will be a batterer's invention program, which is a 16-session module formulated especially for men who physically abuse women.
it doesn't matter what sex you are it doesn't matter what gender male female if someone is in a situation where they're being abused whether it is psychologically physically emotionally financially you should seek help the law of attraction says that positive upbeat people will attract other positive upbeat people it also says that you can't change anyone but yourself it mean, that means that if someone is in a, an abusive situation, no matter what you do, you won't change your abuser. What you can do is seek help. And there are places like the Social Welfare Division, you have the Gender Bureau, you have National Council of Women, you can come in here to talk with me at Planned Parenthood. There is help. She added that Planned Parenthood is looking forward to implementing this second leg of the program, which will be done through the judiciary system. This will be a batterer's invention program, which is a 16-session module formulated especially for men who physically abuse women. The 2014 carnival season officially kicks off with the opening parade on Saturday, February 8th from the streets of Pottersville to the Bayfront in Roseau. At a press conference held on Wednesday by the Dominica Festivals Committee, member of the Road Parade Committee, Charlene White Christian, spoke of the logistics established for Saturday's opening. We would like all registered groups, bands, individuals, floats, all who is taking part in the opening parade, to assemble from 1.30 p.m., 1.30 p.m., all right, around the Pottersville Savannah. Now, I'm going to tell you the assembling area. We are asking you to assemble from Pottersville Savannah, along Goodwill Road and E.H. Charles, near to the, all the way down to the Public Works Department entrance. Now, we're asking all the contestants, like queens, princesses, and so forth, to assemble as close, to, as, close as possible to the Pottersville Savannah. And all other floats and so will go all the way down to the E.H. Charles and so forth. The reason for that is this year we are having a little change in the parade. Instead of having the old mass first leading the parade, this year we are going to have the contestants first led by the reigning king and queen. So we're asking them to assemble first and then everyone else will follow. Now the parade route will move southwards along Goodwill Road, across the Isilo Black Bridge, south along Independence Street, westwards along King George V Street. You will turn southwards a little south along Old Street, then proceed northwards along the Dame Eugenia Charles Boulevard. Very important, this year, no music systems will be allowed to go onto the Bayfront. So I'll repeat, no music systems will be allowed to go onto the Bayfront. So what is going to happen this year is when we have gotten the Queen contestants and so on to the Bayfront, these are the only vehicles that will be allowed to enter the Bayfront. And the music systems will be stopped, and on the Bayfront we will have about three well, about two to three posts. We'll have a, a band, most likely, probably, or hi-fi on the stage. So they will continue to feed the revelers' music. We'll have one placed somewhere close to the Garraway Hotel. And we will also have one placed close to the bank and the old um, post office area. Members of the Dominica Festivals Committee highlighted various aspects of the carnival season and sponsors who have come on board to ensure that Mass Dominic 2014 is a success. Executive Director of the Festival Committee, Nafoli Clark, in her remarks, expressed her appreciation for the support of Lime Dominica in the upcoming carnival events. Lime Dominica has initiated its support through its platinum sponsorship at this year's activities and has created a dynamic carnival atmosphere along the streets of Roseau. When you start an event product um, six, eight months ahead, you think that it's never going to arrive. And then all of a sudden it is here. Um, it's here in a big way. Uh, thanks to our platinum sponsors, Lime, we have beautiful pennants on the roadway. And Kareem tells me that they're going to try their very, very best to see if they can um, finish what they started. I want to thank them especially for, for really um, getting that atmosphere set um, for the Real Mass this year. Clark also voiced her gratitude to the government of Dominica and other sponsors for making the festivities possible. 
I'd like to thank the Commonwealth of the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica for the support um, subvention. Um, by extension, Discover Dominica Authority, through which Dominica Festivals Committee works, and also our sponsors. Our sponsors, National Bank of Dominica, coming on board with the Youth Parade, working feverishly with the Road Parade com Committee, in particular, Miss uh, Chris uh, Christian. Um, that's going to be an interesting thing happening on Carnival Monday. We have 15 to 18 youth um, segments coming out on that day. We also would like to thank the Pan Association for uh, partnering with First Caribbean Investment Bank, um, who will be bringing out the ambient sound between one and three on Carnival Monday, a new element that we're trying to introduce this year. Um, when we all get tired and we all, our feet are hurting us after Juve at four, um, Youth Parade at 10, moving down to one, 2.30, just before we wait for the t-shirt mass, we have, thanks to First Caribbean International Bank, the pan on the road this time in the afternoon, giving us uh, a beautiful warm down session. Um, I'd also like to thank um, all the stakeholders who, uh, the space between Christmas, between World Creole Music Festival, Christmas, and coming into Carnival was very <laughs> short this year. So for um, the economics and the, the cash flow of most corporate uh, stakeholders, most um, non-governmental organizations, most um, people who have to now rally to try and get this huge organ moving. I know it was a tremendous effort and I want to be ha on behalf of both Discover Dominica Authority Board and DFC board, and by extension, the staff of all the committees say a big thank you to you for pulling this together in such a unique and incredible way so far. Val Young Bull Coffee, the official promoter of the Real Mass 2014, provides a list of events for the carnival festivities and expressed the importance of supporting Dominica's carnival. And tonight, there's going to be the Startup Calypso tent at the, at the Cicero Hotel. Uh, there's also going to be on Friday the showdown mass camp at the Harlem Plaza. Uh, Saturday, right after the opening of, of Carnival, uh, we all go to the, the, new, the, the, biggest, the biggest fete that's going to happen, the Connect V Fete. There you're going to have the two big bands, the Triple K Global and the WCK Band to get a DJ Fifth the Boss. So that's, that's something that you need to really come and enjoy from 8.30 till 1 o'clock in the morning. It's going to be very interesting. It's only 20 EC dollars, so you can just come right after that. There's also going to be <coughs> Renegade's tent on at the Old Newton School. Stadham tent will be in Layu, at, at the venue in Layu. Uh, Shodong Mass Camp, I understand, will be in Collier. So all around Dominica, things are going to be happening. But it's important that Dominicans support your carnival. It's not a red carnival, not a blue carnival, not a yellow carnival. It's not a lime carnival alone. alone. It's all of us carnival. So we're looking forward to you really, really coming in a big way. And that's why it's always, always my pleasure to, uh, to have Lime here with us because they, they put their money where it's most important. And culture and, and events of this magnitude deserve the right recognition and support. Held under the theme, New Connect Vive, Mass Dominic 2014 promises to continue to be tagged as enhancing Dominica's tourism product. GIS will bring you more details of the DFC press conference in a subsequent newscast. In more news, in a recent interview with GIS News, coordinator of the Child Abuse Prevention Unit, Gemma Azil Lewis, explored the unit's fight against the damaging social issue. Lewis explained that there are numerous types of child abuse existent on the island which continue to remain a matter of major concern. Emotional, physical and sexual abuse were listed in addition to neglect, which is also considered child abuse, if they affect minors under 18. The unit's work to deal with these situations is guided by, among other things, the principle of discretion, which protects both reporters and victims of abuse. We always tell persons that when you call us to report an incident of child abuse or you go to the police to report, we don't need your name. We don't need the reporter's name. We don't need that. All we need is the incident. What transpired, if you know what transpired, at least as, uh, as much information as possible about the victim. And if you know who the abuser is, we need that information. 
You give us that information, we don't ask you who you are. So reporting child abuse is anonymous. While the unit deals with child abuse cases in various ways, sexual abuse of children is dealt with by the law enforcement agencies. Lewis explains further. We investigate on our own in terms of going to the home, speaking with the child, offering our services in terms of counselling, um, speaking with the, the family members, and also finding out the social aspect of that home. Um, on our own, try to find out what could have contributed to the child being abused. Is it something in the home in terms of, is it because basic needs are not fully met at the home, so person, a person saw that, an abuser saw that and tried to take advantage of that situation and then we see how we can help that home in terms of making um, um, a request to, for that person to get some sort of assistance, whatever it may be, if it's financial or otherwise. So this is our part of it where we intervene in the social aspect so the, the, the family can get help in that area. And um, also, if it is not sexual abuse and it is physical abuse and all, all, um, emotional abuse or neglect, we also try to intervene in terms of if the child needs to remove, to be removed from the home alternate placement, place the child in foster care or with another family member, try to see how we can intervene in that aspect. The biggest challenge of affecting the work of the Child Abuse Prevention Unit, however, is failure of persons to report cases or suspected cases of abuse. This is why the unit has organized a campaign to publicize the importance of speaking out. We are going to continue with our Break the Silence campaign, which we launched in December. It is um, basically pr um, where we promote the prevention of child sexual abuse and we use the blue teddy bear as the symbol for the Break the Silence campaign. It's a blue teddy bear with a little plaster on the heart of the teddy bear and which signifies healing. So we're going about, to, we, we intend to continue this Break the Silence campaign, let persons know that it is time that we, we report child abuse cases and we do something about child sexual abuse. We're going to continue with the schools, with our educational sessions with the schools in terms of the, and we go to all the schools, the primary, the secondary, and also the preschools. We go in the preschools to talk to the children about good, good and bad touches and also the private parts and all these different things. We're also going to continue for our, our, our drive with the parents. We have started parenting programs in, in several communities and we intend to continue that during the course of the year and also to work with peer counselors in the schools. Based on the trend of the discussion, the next logical question was to do with how society can get involved in curbing the trend. Lewis suggested participation in campaigns, recommending workshops at schools, workplaces, churches and other social gatherings and the ever important reports of abuse cases. In today's in-depth report, we provide you with an update on government's recently launched national employment program. The world is facing a worsening youth employment crisis. According to statistics from the International Labour Organization, young people are three times more likely to be unemployed than adults, and almost 73 million youth worldwide are looking for work. The ILO's call for action on youth employment has called on governments and social partners across the globe to adopt targeted measures including public employment programs and specific youth employment interventions to address the global concern. The ruling Dominican Labour Party administration led by Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt has not only listened to the call but has taken action. Fellow citizens, Ladies and gentlemen, government has made the creation of employment a priority. The administration, amidst a global economic crisis, committed significant resources to provide opportunities for the nation's youth to be gainfully employed. This financial year, the government is investing over $9 million into the Employment and Small Business Support Unit for small business development, employment and job creation initiatives. On December 2nd, 2013, the administration launched the National Employment Program, a multifaceted initiative characterized by training and job placements. 240 individuals 
who have completed training with the Employment and Small Business Agency, Adult Education Division, Basic Needs Trust Fund, and the Dominica State College, will be engaged in an on-the-job training and mentorship program with over 80 businesses and organizations across the island. As part of the program, a new education mentorship program will create jobs for 50 young people who will provide after-school care, tutoring and homework assistance to primary and secondary school students in communities across the island. There will also be opportunities for 50 individuals in 10 communities to be employed on special community projects including community tourism, school feeding and landscaping. One component of the NEP which continues to receive positive reviews is the internship program where young people with a mix of education, experience and skills are placed in private and public sector firms for one year with the salaries being paid by the state. They are our children, our relatives, our neighbors and friends. We owe it to them to create and give them a positive start of life. 35 university graduates were also given internship opportunities at government statutory corporations, including the Aid Bank, Invest Dominica Authority, and the Dominica State College. Julius Corbett is general manager of the Aid Bank. He has nothing but kudos for the efforts by the ruling DLP government to address youth unemployment. The number of people are young folks are educated, coming back here and nothing to do. I thought that was an extraordinary, brilliant move by the government to do that. The internship program, which introduced 12 young people to the financial institution, is a win-win situation for the interns and bank officials. We are getting a, a bunch of bright people here with skills that um, we need here. We at least have a year's worth of experience to go now and put on our resume and present to some, another company, whether in Dominica, in the region, or the rest of the world, and say, these are the skill sets that I've developed while I'm on this program. Corbett says some of the interns will remain beyond the one-year internship period. Oh, absolutely. No doubt about it. You know, there, I don't want to name names, because I don't, but I have seen about four or five of these young people here who... Uh, they have immersed themselves in, into the setting. 400 young people are expected to benefit from the National Employment Program. To date, over 260 are already part of the program. And that's it for the English segment of the news. Macfus and St. Louis is next with the Creole highlights. Hello, tout le monde. Bienvenue à ce nouvel en Creole. Non moins, c'est Macfus and St. Louis. Premièrement, le gouvernement dominique déjà qu'à tapé travail où la consultant commencé à ses policiers pour gouverner les affaires en Dominique. Parole celle-là sorti au ministère environ, honorable Dr. Kenneth Darrow. Déjà, ces consultants là ont commencé à travailler, ils ont déjà allé, ils ont déjà cherché tout le document qu'ils ont qu préparé avant, parce que le travail a commencé à laisser ça pour, pour, pour d'autres monde. Le travail a um, pour m'aimer ces parties, les parties engagées, les projets qui sont là, les pays, les policiers qui ont plan, qui développé pour certains pas de données qui sont venus pour Portsmouth, pour Newton, mais actuellement nous allons nous allons nous allons garder les pays qui ont un entité, et nous allons comment nous allons manager les nous. Parce que ma façon, tout est bien ça là, qui est enlacé ensemble. Land use, ever, ever, disaster risk, climate change. Because um, si nous si nou we sa ki fait um, a lave and well an Dominic, nous we ki um, we, um, we se, se waterways la, peut-être se tom, se tom de na pate, pate um, adequate pou, pou, pou chaye gloa ki, ki, ki desan. Me, me, an, uh, um, hod ki sa, i, i tene lot factor ki contribue pou disaster sa, ever, sa se contribue nom, ever, o la, um, um, move, practice, everyone. Ever move um 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 service um hot um te ever ever um ever lot to see between serving yes um no care where such is affected so no care no so no care spirit we even land this policy so ever ever um registration nef no ne everyone ever 
projet PPC à ça que nous ça ouais comment nous ça manager à environ avec toutes ces toutes ces issues là qui casser dans environ dans un pays non à la nouvelle police dominique qui a ce public là pour suivre wag qui ont mis en place pendant mars dominique ouvert samedi qu'a venu superintendant police david andrew adressé conférence media festival communauté dominique jodia on l'a mentionné à dans ce wag là il a quitté portersville cadesan um à CB front là nous ka di yo la yo ni pou parker la yo pa ni pou rentrer comment trafic la kay traverser so c'est ça nous ka di yo nous ka verti moun nous ka di yo pou obéir ces um sin la nous ka mete dou bout pou tout moun pou tout moun ki ka conduit voiti pou obéir ces directions nous ka mete parce que trafic ni responsabilité a pour conduire trafic pour tout monde ça marcher à à à à la paix et puis pour y pas ni à à difficulté pour monde qui ca marcher à ce chemin et puis pour d'autres monde qui ca servir et puis conduire voiti so nous ni plusieurs places monde pas ni pour parquer à ce chemin a nous mon ca dit ça à ce dem mugenia charles boulevard là commencé à 8h à c'est le 8 là c'est samedi qu'a venu pers mon pani pour parquer là à si chimé ça à si savana <coughs> stiba street à 11h pers mon pani pour parquer voiti à si pour um, par chimé à portersville qui qu'a venu joindre Um, Savannah, Portersville. En la nouvelle, le gouvernement nomme les cas dépensé 3 millions de dollars pour bâtir Chimé, Lali, en Guambé. Parole ça la sortie au premier ministre Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt pendant qu'il était visité la constituante là ensemble et puis même parlement Honorable Justin Charles la semaine passée. Compagnie d'Owasco déjà ont placé vieux pipe à l'eau, bagaille qui facilite le travail commencé à ce Chimé Salam. D'autres aspects projet Chimé Salam, c'est pour manger à ces deux côtés Chimé Lam, qui commencé à tête là pour aller juste à Bagwambé. Il y a l'autre aspect projet là, c'est pour mettre Colas à ce Chimé Lam. On a aussi annoncé qu'il y a quatre compagnies contractes au Gwambé qui ont fait travail à ce projet Salam. Et puis finalement, le gouvernement People's Republic of China a financé le projet Kai en Casabros. Parole celle-là sortie au même parlement Casa Bruce, Honorable Johnson Drago. Le gouvernement chinois, quand il fait 10 cas, il va nous mettre dans monde qui était affecté en désastre en Iran. Donc, et puis 10 contracteurs qui ont travaillé là, parce que chaque cas, il a coûté en haut 100 000 dollars. Donc, ça qui fait l'employement dans un lot de monde. À Iria. Et puis aussi, nous avons espéré un grand projet. Le gouvernement a fait une manœuvre pour manger chez mes sorties, casser pour vous, répéter sur vous, casser pour vous, arriver à Manhattan Garden, pour casser pour venir, casser pour vous, et so on. So, on ne peut pas travailler avec la constituante avant nous, et puis nous sommes bien contents pour ça. Mais c'est mesdames, ça c'est tout pour nous, nouvelles en créole pour à présent. Non, moi c'est Mac Fusson saint -Louis. Au revoir. Before we bring you the tip of the day, we have one important announcement. The Dominica Employment and the Small Business Support Agency is doing it once again, providing employment opportunities through apprenticeship program. An orientation exercise session will be held at the Trafalgar Community Center at 7 p.m. on Thursday, February 6, 2014. All are asked to come out and get an opportunity to dialogue with the staff of the agency and government ministers. Coming up next, today's tip of the day. Together we build, together we strive. We see it all on your government information service, Channel 7. This is the government information service, bringing you all that you need to know about all that's happening in your country's development. GIS, you and your channel. Running doesn't just benefit your body, it boosts your brain power too. 
Research shows that those who do aerobic exercise frequently have better cognitive flexibility than those who are less active. Working out improves your ability to multitask effectively and to easily adapt to new conditions. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. A friend us on our Facebook page and be sure to like our GIS Dominica fan page. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Mervyn Matthew. And I'm Tasia Plosak. Thanks for watching.